to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. How altars work? Let's hurry up. Parasuzi Briakatosa Liakataman. Now, pay attention. I want to show you a mystery. I want to show you how altars work. Ah, may God give us understanding. Amen. Let me tell you. You see this, our fathers of faith? The level of results they are commanding? Believe me, if you think it is just based on intellect, think again. You see this, our nation and Africa? The kind of trouble we are in? If you think it's just a political trouble, think again. Do you not see the consistency of the operations regardless what government comes? It is an altar, my dear people. More than just who is there or who is not there. Do you not see what happens to people during election? It's as if something just comes on people and nobody knows what he's doing until after everything, everybody starts complaining. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. How does altars work? How does an altar work? Please write this down. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. And I want to reveal it to you now. All satanic altars systems of authorization systems of communication right they are powered by one major access point or one major altar now forgive me to make reference to my dear film lord of the rings remember that our movie now remember if you've not watched it i don't know what to tell you but you just follow god will grant you understanding remember uh, I, I hope I understand the film really very well but I know that there were many rings that were given to kings and then there was one ring is that true that powers the remaining other rings this is what I'm trying to teach you that all other altars are at the mercy of this one altar that means no matter what you do to all other altars if this one altar still remain you wasted your time now, this is the mistake that most people have, that they just keep rebuking things individually. Poverty, this one, that one. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. Pay attention now. It's called the altar of sin and iniquity. Write it down, please. Judges chapter 6 and verse 1. The altar of sin and iniquity. This is the altar that powers every other satanic altar and the children of israel did evil in the sight of the lord and the lord delivered them into the hands of midian seven years what was the cause of the problem evil in the sight of the lord the altar of sin and iniquity and hold on before you assume any self-righteousness i want to tell you there are different levels of sin there is your personal sin when it has to do with altars there are territorial sins and there are sins that come from bloodlines so don't be too quick to just stand with self-righteousness and say it does not concern me the the altar of sin and iniquity hosea chapter 7 and verse 1 i found this scripture and it blessed me so powerfully Look up, please. Let me, let, me, let me read it for you. When I would have healed Israel, 
then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria I was about to come and heal them but there was something that was discovered when I would have healed Israel the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered Romans chapter 5 from verse 12 to 14 Romans chapter 5 the Bible says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin are we together now look how serious this issue of death is and yet he's saying death had to wait for sin to enter to authorize it to come in he says so then death passed upon all men for all have sinned we're reading to 14 13 now for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law 14 now this scripture blessed me so much nevertheless he said death reigned he didn't just come it now came and even reigned from adam to moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression do you know what this means this is he's talking about us now the effect of that original seed it came and reigned even after them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression who is the figure of him who is to come the altar of sin and iniquity john chapter 9 from verse 1 and 2 john chapter 9 the bible says and as jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth now hear what the disciples said verse 2 and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin are you seeing the disciples they went straight to the issue that they believed would have been the cause remember these guys had been under the mentorship of jesus this man's condition there must be something that has authorized satan he said who seen this man or his parents there was something they had known about the teaching of jesus some versions will say who seen him or his father because the word father means source so is it him or his background both of them can create an effect in his life who sinned i wrote down here just for your quick learning three levels of sin with respect with respect to the activity of altars three levels of sin number one personal sin personal sin first john chapter 1 and verse 8 personal sin three levels of sin if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us period the bible states it very clearly unmistakable there number two territorial sin territorial sin that means your personal sin you can repent before god but there is territorial sin a territory can sin against god an example sodom and gomorrah genesis 18 from verse 21 sodom and gomorrah was not just a personal sin he appears to abraham we are reading to 22 to 23 i will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the crowd in fact let's start from 20. let's start from 20. he says the lord said because the cry of sodom and gomorrah is great and because their sin as a territory is very grievous uh-huh i will go down and see whether they have done together according to the cry of it which is come to me if not i will know verse 22 it says and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards sodom but abraham stood yet with the lord one last verse and abraham drew, drew near and said 
will thou also destroy the righteous and the wicked that means in that city they were righteous and wicked people the righteous man being lot yet as far as god was concerned as a territory they were sinners Statistics show sadly that Nigeria is ranked one of the highest among corrupt nations. Are you corrupt? But it's, it's a sad badge we have to wear, nationally speaking. Is that true? No matter how righteous you are, the whatever lash we have to receive by reason of carrying a Nigerian passport, we all corporately, no matter how individually righteous we are, you have to face that backlash until as a territory, we are changed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Sodom and Gomorrah, a territory can sin. Another example, Jonah chapter 1, Nineveh. Nineveh, Jonah chapter 1 and verse 3. And then we'll go to chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3. Jonah chapter 1 and verse Jonah chapter 1 verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, We're reading to verse 3: Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against cry against what? The city. Cry against the city, for their wickedness is come up before me. Verse 3. Uh, you know what happened to jonah jonah ran away and all the story that happened in disobedience and you know that jonah was angry because he said lord i know these people you are right if i talk to them now and they repent that means a territory can repent of their sins are we together chapter 3 and verse 1 now jonah came out of the belly of the fish verse 1 now 3 verse 1 and the word of the lord came to jonah the second time saying we're reading to verse 3 arise go to nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that i bid thee that means what i told you go and tell them there is authorization from darkness to destroy you based on that altar of sin and iniquity and if you don't do anything about it judgment is coming what happened verse 3 so jonah arose and went on to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord it says now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey later on we are going to be reading what happened because as soon as Jonah announced that the Bible says they declared a fast plus the animals everything that was alive fasted to repent if I stole money and I bought cassava with it and a goat eats it territorially we are all sinners so the animals fasted it's in your bible praise the lord so there's territorial sin the last level of sin is seen based on foundations and bloodlines please write it down don't worry don't be afraid of hearing all these words i know you've had them and you've run away from them for a long time you just trust me i'm a good pilot Sin based on foundations and bloodlines. Don't forget these three levels of sin. Personal sin, territorial sin, and then sin that is based on foundation and bloodline. Psalms 11 and verse 3. It says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the... Not what can men do. Even the righteous will be affected. Exodus chapter 34 from verse 6. Exodus 34 and verse 6. Watch this now. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Next verse. Keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty it says visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation uh-huh 
it says and moses made haste and bowed his head and worship next verse it says moses now if i have found grace we are reading to 14 in your sight O lord i pray thee go among us for it is a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity are you seeing moses repenting and asking the lord he said this one is not just for myself i i agree with what with what you have said verse 10 he says okay let's go to verse 9 watch this moses is pleading now on behalf of his people he says and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance how did god respond to that issue verse 10 please and he said behold i make a covenant before all thy people i will do marvels such as have not seen done in all the earth nor in any nation and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the lord for it is a terrible thing that i will do with thee reading to 14 verse 11 now quickly observe thou that observe thou that which i command thee this day behold i will drive out before thee the amorites the canaanites the hittites the perizzites the hivites the jebusites uh-huh take heed to yourself lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest let it be for a snare in the midst of thee verse 13 but ye shall destroy their is that in your bible i want to do business now that you are begging me now that you are pleading with me to have mercy let me show you what you need to do it's not just the issue of pleading there are things that will keep speaking you shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. Last verse. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous. Wow. I only used to read that he's a jealous God, and he's saying the Lord whose name. Not negative satanic jealousy. Let's not confuse what is written here. Jealousy just means that ability to want to see that which you love protected and preserved that there is something about god when he sees that spiritual halotry from god to god and when sin and iniquity creates that altar we people bring judgment upon themselves personal sin territorial sin please look up whether you like it or not we are all victims of territorial sin and if not all of us especially africa bloodline foundations do you believe that you will hear of a story of somebody who buried human beings every day and then you just shrug it off and say it does not matter do you know what the people said before they passed on and you just believe oh no problem everything is gone no there are rules of engagement i've taught you this when we're dealing with deliverance that even the sin of man god did not cast it out of man as powerful as god is he didn't cast sin out of man the lamb had to come and die lived 33 years died to purchase redemption for us is someone following now just like demonic altars all godly altars are powered by one major altar too have i lost you all godly altars are powered by one major altar that means if you see any platform that has been available to men to encounter god to authorize activities of the realm of the spirit there is one major altar that powers them all the bible calls it the throne of grace the throne of grace alongside the blood of jesus that is called the eternal covenant that is the principal altar that powers everything good in the life of the believer please do not forget this every system of authorization every system of exchange every system that allows for interaction with the angelic with the holy spirit 
every system that commands spiritual virtues to come upon the saints is powered by this one altar the throne of grace hebrews chapter 4 please from verse 4 to 16. if you're following please say amen, amen. 14 i meant to say hebrews 4 14 14 to 16. hebrews 4 14. he says seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god he said let us hold fast our profession 15 now for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity but was in all points tempted like us yet without sin 16. let us therefore come boldly unto that throne of grace he says we will obtain mercy and we will find grace to help in time of need someone shout hallelujah Hebrews chapter 12, please, from verse 22 to 24. Please write these scriptures down. But ye are come to Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Next verse. To the general assembly, the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect 24 now it says unto jesus hallelujah the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood that he used you see that now the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of abel you read what paul was teaching that jesus carried his own blood as the high priest and poured it upon that altar once and for all if you ever see any any believer in christ walking consistently in favor walking consistently in grace walking consistently in victory having divine encounters those are different altars and platforms that make for that possibility but the one altar that powers it all is the throne of grace that throne you see god sitting on is an altar who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. No one will. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. My God, can you imagine that He sits on an altar, an altar that ensures that what He says, if you believe it and you access it. And you see, every other person who has tried to put together an altar will eventually die. But there is he that liveth and abideth. The throne of grace is an altar. It is the throne of grace that powers that altar of prayer the altar of favor every platform that allows you to receive of any spiritual blessing is powered by this one altar the same way every demonic occurrence around families territories and nations is powered principally by the altar of sin and iniquity is someone learning already hebrews chapter 13 20 and 21 hebrews 13 20 and 21 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant 21 the same way that blood 
even made a way for Jesus Christ to return from the dead it says make you perfect in every good work to do his will that means whatever needs to make you go forward there is an altar that insists that the provision is there for you this is very powerful every time you come to Jesus and hand over your life to him more than just receiving of his life you subscribe to the covenant of that altar are we together yes so it does not matter what altars it does not matter what demonic things it does not matter whether my grandfather or great-grandfather whether my region worship idols it does not matter what it is one thing is that the moment you become connected to that one altar that throne of grace through the blood of the eternal covenant how to raise and maintain altars you don't have to cry cuz I have paid the price I plead the blood I plead the blood I plead the blood I plead the blood the blood the blood I plead the blood I plead the blood eternal saving blood I don't have to cry for you have paid the price one more time here I plead the blood 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 the blood eternal saving love I don't have to cry for you have paid the price one minute recap on everything we have said we said how that an altar is a system of authorization an altar is a platform that allows the realm of the spirit to interact with the physical realm and that an altar also allows for laws and spirits to find expression and then that, that an altar is what empowers and activates covenants and keeps them alive hallelujah we did say how that the major assignment of altars is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether it is godly or demonic and we agreed that you can test the presence of altars in a life a family a business a region through the consistency of patterns and occurrences whether they be negative or positive we discuss how altars work that all demonic altars are powered by one major system of authorization the altar of sin and iniquity and that all godly manifestations you call them altars systems platforms that allow for the victory of the saints they are empowered by this one altar called the throne of grace alongside the blood of the eternal covenant now how to raise and how to maintain altars this also doubles to teach you how to tear down altars every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome every high every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear, you wear the victor's crown you overcome one more time. Every high king must come down. Every stronghold. You wear, you wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Listen, some of you 
by reason of this teaching and the prayers that will follow shortly you will rewrite the narratives of your families believe me when i tell you this that what they said has not been done it is with gallancy and victory you will do it that nobody in your family can rise and you have seen it happen now with this knowledge you will hold it like a key and clear those altars to give you room we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you lord we will raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we will sing in honor of you can i tell you the truth every man you see who has become a champion found a way to put those altars down everybody pastor listen this may be the key you've been looking for why is it that ministry does not work when the altars go down the result will speak you will see it and you will know that victory has come please pray in the spirit in one minute before i teach you how to raise altars those watching make sure you are praying connect from your homes connect from any region behold i show you a mystery in the name of jesus please sit down I'm excited in my spirit right please how to raise altars how to tear down altars how to maintain altars now please write today we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures or monuments today for the new believer in Christ now we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures and monuments necessarily that means you don't have to go and stand somewhere and start carving things putting blocks together to look for no now that does not mean you cannot dedicate a place say for instance to meet with god like a prayer room or something no that's not what i'm we're not talking that is still scriptural that you can find a place to spend with God but that today we do not raise altars by erecting physical structures and monuments necessarily to know how to erect structures structures that work with power and grace we have to learn from one of the great patriarchs Elijah first Kings 18 We're going to learn how to erect altars from the man Elijah. Let's start from verse 19 for sake of time. This was, at a, this was a point of decadence where the purposes of God had suffered a great deal under Jezebel and Ahab. And now this great prophet of God arose called Elijah, Elijah the Tishbite. And he's about to judge the prophets in the encounter that we know to be the encounter of fire at mount carmel let's read pay attention as we learn the lesson now therefore he said send and gather to me all israel unto mount carmel and the prophets of baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 and so on and so forth next verse so ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and they gathered the prophets and they came to Mount Carmel follow closely now Elijah came and all the people and said how long will ye hold between two opinions if the Lord be God follow him but if Baal then follow him and the people answered him not a word next verse Elijah said unto the people I even only you see the mistake 
this one is a mistake clearly he made as a prophet he said i only remain a prophet of the lord but bell's prophets are 450 men 23 let them therefore now watch this he's building an altar now look at the ingredients or the requirements let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it into pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under and i will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire uh-huh and ye call upon the name of your god and i will call upon the name of the lord and the god that answered by fire let him be god and all the people answered and said it is well spoken both the prophets of baal and elijah knew that without altars any other thing they were trying to do and call will be a total waste of time elijah said unto the prophets he says choose you for yourself and call upon the name of your god put no fire under uh-huh and they took the bullock and then when they had put everything they had dressed it they now began to call oh bell hear us but there was no voice nor any that answered and they leaped upon where look at the various skills they were doing but it was on the altar which was made so they made an altar 26 or 27 now and it came to pass at noon that elijah mocked them and said cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked 28 and they cried aloud and caught themselves after their manner did you see that that means there was a way they caught themselves as a last card that when they try everything on that altar and it does not work there is a skill they taught them that you can cut yourself and they tried it they lacerated themselves till blood gushed out upon them 29 and it came to pass when the midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded 30 verse 30 and elijah said unto the people come near unto me and all the people came near unto him step number one he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down follow carefully while looking at the protocol to be able to set up an altar something happened to have given Baal that kind of authority and Elijah now wanting to see the power of God the first thing he did was to repair the altar of the Lord that was broken down reading to 39 let's hurry up 31 and Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of jacob unto whom the word of the lord came saying israel shall be thy name so he did not just gather stones carelessly the stones were according to the word of the lord and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the lord and he made a stretch about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed 33 and he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said fill four barrels with water and he poured it on the bond sacrifice and on the wood 34 and he said do it a second time and he did it a second time and he said do it the third time and they did it the third time uh-huh and the water ran about the altar and he filled the trench also with water 36 and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. 37. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God 
and that thou hast turned their heart back again 38 then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that is in the strange and all when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and they said the Lord he is God the Lord he is God how to raise an altar pay attention number one the Bible says Elisha repaired Elijah repaired the altar that was broken many people miss this step in raising an altar most people emphasize on other things and forget the place of repentance and brokenness please write it down that is what it means to repair the altar of the Lord that has been broken you want to raise an altar that can authorize spiritual activities again it cannot be without repentance and brokenness please write it down can I tell you whether it is as an individual whether as a family whether as a territory you want to see the power of God come again you want to see the realm of the spirit work in partnership with the purposes of God over the lives of the saints it starts with genuine brokenness and repentance not confession not declaration not prophecy not giving repentance unfortunately and respectfully so most times even men of God when we are teaching people these things we do not teach them the place of repentance and brokenness is someone learning this is very 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 powerful genuine repentance and genuine brokenness remember what Moses did as soon as the Lord told him I mean um, Moses when he told him about the judgment coming upon the people he began to plead for mercy even for them let me show you a scripture second Samuel 24 we'll read verse 1 then we'll jump to verse 10 the Bible says and again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and he moved David against them to say go number Israel and Judah so he made a big mistake let's go to verse 10 and David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people watch this now and David said unto the Lord I have seen greatly in that I have in that which I have done and now I beseech thee O Lord take away the iniquity of thy servant for I have done very foolishly say repentance say brokenness we're reading please continue 11 now it says for when David was up in the morning the word of the Lord came unto the prophet God David seer saying 20 verse 12 now go and say to David thus saith the Lord I offer thee three things choose thee one of them that I may do it unto you that means God is saying I'm going to deal with you but I'm going to give you three options verse 13 number one God came to David and told him all of this punishment number one seven years of famine shall come upon thee in the land or will thou flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you or number or shall there be three days pestilence in the land now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me so David these are the three punishments you are going to receive watch this now 14 David said unto God I am in a great strait let us fall now into the hand of the Lord what a wise man for his mercies are great and let me not fall into the hand of man ah. you're not a man no you're not a man no. you're the God who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man, no, you're not a man, no. you're the God of everything, no, I'm 
David is saying, I rather fall into the hands of my creator. I know man. These people will kill me without mercy. Please keep that scripture. Verse 15. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan, even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. Is that in your Bible? 70,000 men. 70,000 men. We're going to visit that later on when I talk about the other aspects. I'm just showing you that if you want to rebuild the altar of the Lord, it must first start with genuine repentance. The Bible says, if my people, you know, we use this scripture all around, but we don't even understand what it means. Nigeria, let me tell you sincerely, if all our strength, and I'm saying this with all due respect and honor, if all our strength is on men to change this nation, let us think again. We have sinned against God as a nation. Even if you have not sinned as a person, we have to take responsibility as a nation to say, Lord, from men of God to politicians, to business people, to those in government, to all of us insulting everybody. We need to break down and say, Lord, it is only you that can show us mercy. And if you do not show us mercy, vain is the help of man. We need to rebuild the altar of the Lord. Our nation is not the first to be in turmoil. Go and read about Sodom and Gomorrah. They did not repent and judgment came upon them and wiped them. How about Nineveh? As soon as Nineveh had that, from the king to everyone and the animals, they came. No complaining, no self-righteousness. Lord, we agree. And Jonah even got angry. He said, Lord, I know you. This is why I refuse to go there. Because I know some of the people these guys killed. And I, I'm hoping I will not bring this message so that they, you will punish them for me. And now they have repented. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata bako tosko tobre kete kete kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.